Hey, Hi. I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie. And we are Adventures in Nomadness. We're still here in Scotland and we're gonna go inside and get out of this and hopefully you'll come along with us to talk about uh, the last three days that we've been here in Scotland. Thanks for joining us to come inside out of this nasty weather outside. And really, I don't mind it. It's just hard to film in. So why are we filming inside? And he's going to answer that question. But before we get to that, let me just say we have a no video to show you. So if you're looking for video, you can turn off right now. If you'd like to see the stills and hear what we've done the last three days, then stay tuned. All right, so why did we stay at this little inn when we have a perfectly good camper van? Uh, a couple reasons. One, we didn't have reservations for anything tonight anyway, so it kind of worked out. Uh, we didn't make it to Aileen Donan Castle, which is right there. And this was the closest thing to it, so we can hit that first thing in the morning. Uh, this morning before we go on over to Isle of Skye, when we're almost over to Isle of Skye. Uh, so, and the weather is super, 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 super nasty. So it was probably about 30 mile an hour winds and driving rain. Uh, so we would have been stuck inside that a tiny little camper van, which is fine. It's actually in the couch position, uh, fairly comfortable, but uh, yeah, we would have been kind of like in there. Um, this gives us a little bit more room tonight, and after five nights in the camper van, it was nice to have a little bit more space, uh, be able to spread out a little bit while sleeping, since I think we've been crammed into about this much space, one single bed anyway <laughs> in the camper van. Um, this is the only room they had left, that's why we're in twin beds here. But yeah, it's kind of nice to be like, ah stretch out. And then we have four more nights in the camper van again, so uh, off to it. So yeah, I lost three days worth of video coverage. Um, I don't know exactly how because we've been downloading, backing up all of our stuff, no problem. And for some reason last night I went to back up, well there was my number one problem, I should have backed it up every single day, a couple times a day didn't do it, got tired at the end of the day, and uh, we're in this nice room, I thought, oh, I'd do it, but uh, for some reason it all went poof, and I don't know exactly what happened, could have been the disc, could have been a couple different things, but anyway, that's not going to happen again, because it's really sad. We've been getting disc error with that particular disc, so I don't think we'll be using it again. No. Anyway, uh, so here's so, our recap Yes. of the last three days. I'll start. <laughs> okay, go for it. We left Edinburgh and we hit tons, and I mean tons, of traffic circles. I wish I could view, show you those, but maybe we'll have we'll something have more. <laughs> to insert here. If not, we'll have more in future days. Then there was really beautiful countryside and that, but uh, getting used to traffic circles and multi-lanes of traffic circles with no lines and five or six exits and trying to listen to the voice commands of when to exit was quite the challenge initially but Angie has I've mastered is it. up to the task and she has had wee amounts of honking the first day maybe a couple honks and now and none <laughs> now no, no. so uh, the first day we went once we got over all of that we headed up towards Stirling Castle and on our way we found um, what was the name of that place we went to the Kelpies and also to Falkirk Wheel uh, both fantastic. So Scotland is amazing for all of its ancient castles and ancient palaces, but their modern uh, art installations and modern engineering feats are off the charts too. So be sure if you're here to check out those two. Falkirk Will was actually better than I thought. Uh, it was really worth going to and pretty interesting to see it because it, it's the uh, only um, ship wheel thing that takes a ship from one level to another level, so it's basically this big round ship wheel thing. Um, so it's pretty cool. I will tell you, I wish, I think we have some stills, I hope we have some stills, but um, I could not understand it until I actually saw it. You basically have a bucket down here mm -hmm. that a boat, a long boat that they have here, goes up into, they shut it, so it's full of water, so you have a bucket full of water, and then up above, I would say 100 feet, is another trough that essentially goes to an upper um, waterway. So, but we'll show you so, some pictures of that. So they're basically trying to take this bucket and 
wheel it up to there and it goes in a big circle. Right. What I thought was really cool is if you have kids, or not kids, they have some great uh, games. They have bumper boats there, but also these interactive things that kind of explain how water, movement of water, uh, like water wheels and things like that work, which I thought w was even better um, beyond the rest of it. So the other highlight of was the Kelpies, a massively large horse mm -hmm. head uh, art installation. Uh, really, really cool. So that was a lot of fun. And then we went to Sterling Castle. Um, after that. I thought that was a disappointment after we went to the palace. Yeah, we, we had gone to Linlithgow Palace before that and that was based on uh, a recommendation uh, from someone and uh, that was really amazing. So we bought the Explorer Pass which gets you into all these different places including Edinburgh Castle, Stirling Castle and about 75 other lesser known sites. Uh, Urquhart Castle was one of them and uh, Linlithgow Palace was just kind of this ruins and it was really really cool. So we just we actually saw that one because we were just driving. Yeah that's right you just no. saw driving. Yeah we didn't like, get oh, no, that, that particular no one we didn't have a recommendation. Right. We just it's all becoming eh, a blur. Eh, <laughs> no. Right. Squirrel. Yeah, squirrel. <laughs> and we discovered we really like those old ruined castles, not the ones that are kind of, you know, pretty up for tourists. And we kind of felt that way about Sterling a little bit. Edinburgh mm -hmm. Castle was was great. Uh, Sterling Castle has been, I don't, I don't know, it wasn't, it's been it wasn't really that interesting to yeah. look at. It's not, it doesn't have the original stuff in it. It's essentially been renovated. So you get an idea of what it would have been like to live there and how it would have been decorated but it is all uh stuff that's been brand new like mm -hmm. all the tapestries were created Re right, recently yeah. the all the paint and all the paintings all of the armor it's all fake it's not real but it was still pretty cool if you're into history yeah. there's a lot of a lot uh, of people like it yeah so. a lot of history a lot of tour buses there from so it's pretty busy. yeah and the town of Sterling was kind of fun to walk around a little bit. So uh, parking at Sterling is sketchy unless you want to pay for it. I would say that's true of a lot of these places that you oftentimes have to pay to park if you want to be near the site if they're super popular. We did not and we have yet to pay because we don't want to pay to park. So we <laughs> <We're cheap>. park <laughs> on the streets or in further out parking lots and walk. And that's true of that one and as well as the, the Kelpies. Yeah, that's the beauty of having the little minivan. It is a camper van. And uh, it's the beauty of having something as small as it is because we've been able to get into literally any parking spot, street parking, uh, Castle parking, whatever attraction parking, uh, that's been really great for getting in too. So that. what? And one of the benefits is sometimes you'll run into locals, which we did when we were walking back to our vehicle, uh, and had a nice little oh, chat. Oh yes, we did. Local, uh, with local a fellow, local fellow who filled us in a little bit on some of the other stuff that's around. So I always feel like the more you're out walking and the more you're saying hello to people, the more likely it is that you're going to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So where do we go next? Um, I think. After Sterling, we pretty much went back. We went to our camping spot mm -hmm. in Skoon. Uh, the Scots pronounce it Skoon. It's just like cow is a coo and a stone is a stoon. <laughs> so, uh, so that was a camping and caravan club site. And we joined the Camping and Caravan Club so that we could uh, have access to a lot of their camping spots and to get discounts as well. And we might talk about that a little bit more in another video. So that's uh, because we've got a couple more. So we've stayed in two of their campgrounds now. We've this, got two the, more. The first one was my favorite though. It was yeah, all it was paved, really nice. nicely spaced out. Um, I would say really spacing is more like what we'd find at a county or a state park. park. It's not like a thousand trails. The, the second one that we'll talk about was more spaced out and kind of a little bit run down, older. Uh, I would say that that was closing the gap on Thousand Trails, but <laughs> still not quite as bad. <laughs> totally. So yeah, that was a nice peaceful night there. And then uh, we'll head on to day two of all that. We left our Schoon campsite and went to go find some coffee. We found a Cafe Nero in Perth and uh, yeah, it was a little stressful kind of finding parking in the city, town, I guess. And I think I just made it through this one-way pedestrian street before they closed it off. And probably get a ticket in the mail because I parked and then I was a little bit uh, harried. A little bit like, eh, this traffic sucks. And not really the traffic, but the driving sucks. And uh, a slight little meltdown. But anyway, I found street parking and didn't look to see if there were a uh, pay machine, which was one right in front of us when we walked back. But anyway, might have a ticket. 
coming as far as parking without paying. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to that. <laughs> if they were actually enforcing it that time of morning, because there wasn't a whole lot of people on their street. Yeah, hopefully park. not. <laughs> they'll send it to the van rental company, and then they'll take it out of the deposit that we paid. So we walked around Perth a little bit and uh, over a bridge and there's really cool old buildings and we ran into the really cool Perth Art Museum and, and uh, History Gallery. Yeah, so going back to the bridge first, we um, had crossed it a couple times and noticed that it said that it was built in the 1700s. So we just kind of wanted to go back. It had a great view off of it. Unfortunately, we probably don't have any footage of that. Um, but they apparently, it's, it goes back to early 1700s and then they widened it uh, later. In the 1800s sometimes. And then the museum was an awesome museum. Yeah, it was a really great museum for kind of a medium small, uh, medium sized town. It had a, a Jacobite uh, exhibition going on, which was really interesting, especially because we were heading up north to Inverness uh, later on that day and uh, going to Culloden Field, the Cal Culloden Battlefield which was also interesting. Uh, so we ended up just chatting with one of the, the docents there, really, really super sweet, Kirsty was her name, and I uh, really enjoyed that museum, and she recommended that we go to the Blair Castle, which we did later on that day. So I was happy to drive out of Perth and then on some country roads, which has its own challenges because they're really, really narrow. <laughs> it's basically one-way roads paved, and you run across this like if you go, Backcountry, yeah, right. Backcountry, so where a, you pull off to let somebody come by you, except pay it all the way and go. I don't know what 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. I don't know. Let's keep them at sixty <laughs> miles an hour. I'm like, I'm yeah. not going sixty miles yeah. an hour on these roads. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we went up to and followed her suggestion and went up to uh, Blair uh, Castle, which was really interesting and a big highlight. So yeah, it's great to talk to locals and get their recommendations on uh, cool things to do because we haven't, we wouldn't have gone to that castle if it wasn't for rec her recommendation. And it was celebrating its 750 years since it had been built. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so for whiskey, we stopped at the Dalwini uh, <laughs> Distillery that day, which was another recommendation. I'm not a scotch drinker. I have been trying to find the one. <laughs> Rhonda's already found a few. <laughs> but it's just not my thing. I'd rather stick with wine or beer. Uh, but I've been trying to find something that maybe I, I like. And uh, from a recommendation at the Edinburgh uh, Whiskey Tasting Experience place, she said, try Dalwini. And they had a little bottle there. She said, this is a great one for first time drinkers. It's not, you know, super heavy. It's not smoky. It's just got a really nice flavor. So we end up going to the distillery and having a, a nice little a tour there with a couple of tastings. And I actually did like the whiskey there. So I bought a bottle and, and off we go. <laughs> but a really fun tour. So, and it's the highest elevation uh, they make it um, highest and coldest. Yeah, highest and coldest. So a average that's part cold. of their part of their uh, distillation process is to when it goes through the copper stuff, the outside water is, is super cold. And it was actually pretty chilly when we were there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're looking forward to spending more time in the Highlands for our West Highland Way walk. And I think we're going to have some chilly temperatures. Uh, this time of year in September and uh, yeah so that was uh, that was a good stop and then from there it was kind of the the end of the day and we thought we had about an hour left to drive up north to Nairn which is to the east of Inverness where our camping spot was that night and uh, originally the GPS said it would take about an hour well, it took us two hours again driving a lot slower than the speed the limit. The GPS um, thinks you're going to go sat 60 plus and we're not. No. <laughs> 60 plus on a one lane road with two way traffic is not my idea of a fun time. So lesson and then, learned there if you're planning a trip, just recognize that you might not be going as fast as the local traffic. No, and um, I think she routed us on a bunch of weird back roads. I should have stayed on the A9 and gone through Inverness and out that way I think it would have been a lot faster because I was driving the speed limit on their main road. So anyway, <laughs> lesson learned. Uh, we did show up to Nairn. Uh, campground it was another camping and caravan club site, not as nice as the one before, but uh, they were real friendly as just about every Scottish person here has been, and it was a good spot for the first night. It was actually a great landing spot for the things we wanted to do on day three of our missing video <laughs> coverage. Day three, Nairn. Our lost coverage, day three. So we woke up in Nairn, and our our big, uh, I guess, uh, thing we wanted to do for the day was go to Culloden Battlefield uh, mm -hmm. along with Urquhart Castle. 
but uh, we found that we don't really like to rush on our travels and so we would felt a little bit rushed the first couple of days on the road trip and uh, felt like we were kind of missing out on some of the, the local scenes so we went into town for coffee by, by rushed we mean you know going go 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 yeah doing without really chatting with locals and and things like that uh, so we went into town for coffee because someone has a major coffee addiction it's Sleeping in a van and not getting much sleep leads you to wanting something hot when it's cold out. <laughs> anyway, we coffee or tea, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we went in and had a you know okay coffee, but the bakery was really good. And uh, oh, on the way though, important story here. On the way into downtown Nairn, all of a sudden our van goes. <laughs> We're hearing this from the front driver's right. side, which would be on the right-hand side. Yeah, it was a horrible It noise. sounded like scraping metal on scraping metal. Yeah, I felt like I ran over something and was dragging it down the street. Mm -hmm. So I turned into, uh, drove just a little bit, drove into a gas station, and as I'm driving into park, I'm like, holy Toledo moly, there's a an actual repair garage right behind the gas station. So the first thing is we got out and we looked all around to see if we were in fact dragging something. No. Or if it looked like there was something stuck in the disc brake. So that was my other thought is maybe there's a rock. So I looked and I couldn't really see anything. So anyway, I went in and uh, chatted with them. They're like, oh yeah, we got time to take a look at that. There's probably a rock in the, in the brake. <laughs> yeah, so they put it up on the lift and within about 20 minutes had the rock out and 18 pounds, uh, uh, the charge is 18 pounds. And within like 20, 25 minutes, we were back on the road again. So that was super, super awesome that we happened to be driving past. I held up the rock. He gave us the it rock. It was pretty small. It was about that big. Yeah. And I asked the guy at the cash register if he charged by the pound. And I said, ha ha, well, they do charge <laughs> but, by the pound. But literally, it's like, yeah. So if it was a bigger rock, charge more this size he says really. yeah it's funny how they can make their way in but they can't make their yeah. way back out again mm -hmm. but uh, our main kind of attraction we wanted to see for the day was Culloden battlefield and uh, it's a really important uh, battlefield in terms of Scottish history if you know anything about Scotland it's got a, a very bloody uh, clan history um, also Protestants versus Catholics uh, royals versus non. I mean, it just goes on and on with the amount of really bloody wars that have gone on in Scotland's past over the hundreds of years and even thousands of years uh, throughout history. Yeah, so uh, I do recommend to, if you're going to do, you know, some of the attractions, did actually do some of the tours as well. We went uh, with one of the tour guides there at the visitor center and for two pounds each walked us around the battlefield and uh, kind of filled in some of the blanks on the history that you wouldn't get otherwise. So it does add that extra kind of layer and level of uh, you know personal stories and history that you don't get otherwise. Yeah, so if you're into history, it's uh, definitely a must stop on, on any Scottish itinerary. Uh, the area surrounding is absolutely beautiful, but you'll get a real sense when you're at Culloden uh, Battlefield as to the, the, the sheer immensity mm -hmm. uh, of it and the importance of it. Uh, we went on from there to Clava Cairns, which is another historic site, and it uh, by reading the descriptions there, much older, m much older, yeah. Farmers had buried their dead there. They believe around four thousand years ago, so quite old. And all that's really left is these big rock cairns that are around, and uh, pretty interesting. There's a little bit of signage, but um, and there's a lot more cairns sort of out in the countryside that are off limits. So this is one of the few spots you can actually go see these, you know, four thousand year old rock cairns with the uh, graves down below. Kind of interesting too. And not crowded. So that's one of the other things mm -hmm. I like about that particular thing is you could walk around, there was maybe two or three other people. So yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so then we drove over uh, along Loch Ness. So we weren't big into going to Loch Ness to, for the whole I saw of I saw Nessie Ness. though. Over and over yeah. and over, like every white wave was nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. super windy and white caps. Uh, but that was kind of along the route to drive along Loch Ness, and we wanted to go to Urquhart Castle, which was awesome. I love, oh, love, love, love old castle ruins. Uh, much more interesting to me than the well preserved castles, but hey, those are pretty awesome too. But uh, Urquhart Castle is, I mean, there's so much history here, and that's a really cool thing. Again, this castle goes back hundreds and hundreds of years from early beginnings and you know switched hands and a lot of battles were fought over Urquhart Castle. I mean the walls are six foot thick and and yet uh, forces were able to you know f have these big lobbed you know 
concrete balls basically lobbed into there and break some of those walls apart. Uh, eventually that was abandoned because they didn't feel like it was worth, uh, you know, hanging on to, uh, especially after some Jacobite forces came and, and tried to take it and they kind of went away. It was a little bit too strong for them. Uh, but very interesting, bloody history over that castle as well. Uh, so from there we drove over towards Skye uh, knowing that we wanted to see the Aileen Donan castle. Uh, by the time we got over to this area uh, it was definitely you know too late to go tour the that castle so we decided to pitch our pitch ourselves not on a camping pitch but at a this inn and a really cool little spot with really great views. So we're gonna hit Aileen Donan today and continue our real video coverage of it. We hope. Not to lose it this time. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully you follow the rest of our journey. Uh, this is only about the first week into a almost four week uh, journey here in Scotland and Iceland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's laugh silly at the same time. Uh, so we went in town, had coffee, and then we decided to just walk uh, walk around town a little bit. And walk over to the bridge that we saw. Ooh, yeah, walk, no, down to the harbor. Wrong town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah, it all becomes a blur after a while. We'll start over. No, it's okay. 